All right, now we're going to apply what we saw in the previous video and see how we can write the swap routine. So say I do the following thing. In my main program, I declare a variable i, which is an integer variable, and I initialize it to 5. I have another variable, integer j, which I initialize to 6. And I want to call some function called swap, and I want to pass i and j into swap. Uh, so that the i and j will be swapped. And I want to do this in such a way, then when I output uh, uh, i and j, after I swap them, and I say c out i and c out j, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a 6 and a 5 as opposed to a 5 and 6. Now, um, we saw that if we do the following thing, if I write the function in the following way, if I say, for example, void, swap, and I pass in two integers. If I pass in an integer, let's say, k, and an integer, l, and I do uh, sort of what might be intuitively obvious, namely, I declare some temporary variable. Uh, say, I declare an integer, t, to be my temporary variable, and I swap through t. In other words, I say, well, t gets the value of uh, k, so I'm saving the value of k, and then um, k gets the value of l, and then I say l gets the value of t, uh, we would assume that this would swap the, uh, the values. And if I draw a picture, uh, I get the following thing. I get um, k, right, here's my k, and notice that k is local to my function, so here's my k, um, here is my L, also local to the function, and uh, here is my T, also local to the function. And uh, what happens is when I pass over, when I call the function, so since I'm calling I and J, basically I gets placed in K, and, uh, and J gets placed in L, so what I pass over is uh, K gets the value that was in I, which is 5, and, uh, and, K and L gets the value of, uh, of 6. And when I swap them, so what happens is the first, uh, the, first, uh, the first instruction here says, well, save the value of K into T. T gets K. So um, that's step number one. Step number one puts a, a 5 in here. Step number two brings L into K. Right? So L goes into K. So this 5 now is replaced with a 6. This thing now says a 6. And uh, the third step is, so this is step number two, the third step is bringing this down here, right? In other words, L gets the value of T, and uh, what happens there is that I get the 5 here. The 6 is replaced with a 5, and now I have a 6 and 5. We saw, of course, that the problem with this is that there is no, there is no uh, a relationship now between the main program and the subprogram. The main program stays over here. The values of I and J don't get changed because all that got changed is the local values of k and l. So the question is, how do I actually exchange the values in the main program as opposed to the subprogram? We saw that the way to do it in C is that instead of passing the values themselves, what we do is we pass addresses. So I go over to the main program, and instead of saying i, I say, well, I want you to take the address of i, and I want you to take the address of j, right? So I use the ampersand operator and the ampersand operator. And now, since I'm passing over addresses from the main program to the subprogram, that means it no longer goes into an integer variable k, but it goes into a location, a variable that holds pointers. So it's an int star. Likewise, for l, it's going to be an int star. And so, what happens is, I have i and j in the main program, so here is i, and i has the value 5, and here is j, and j has the value 6, but these actually have locations, they live someplace in the memory. So this might be living, say, at location 100a, and this might be living here at location, say, 500a, and so what gets passed over to k and l are the addresses. So here I get 100a, and here I get 500 a. And what I have to do now is I have in this uh, function, I have to change k and l, because k and l now have pointers, but I want to affect the main program via the pointers, so I simply dereference them. 
So instead of saying t gets k, t is still an integer variable, I see I say that t gets star k, and I say that star k gets star l, and star l gets t. And what does star k mean? Well, since k got the value of i, so i has two names. i is called i, but its alias is also star k. And l, uh, star l, is another way of saying j. So, uh, so therefore, when I say t gets star k, it's basically going to uh, say t gets the value of i, right? So t is going to get the value of five, because that what happened. That's what happens to be in um, in uh, in i. Now. So when we said, again, when we said t gets k, what's going to happen is that the value of uh, t is the 5. The second one, when I say k gets star, star k gets star l, well, star k is another way of saying i, star l is another way of saying j. So what's going to happen is I'm going to move the 6 into the 5. So this is no longer going to be a 5. That's going to have a 6 in there. And then when I say uh, l, uh, star l gets t, what is star l? Star l is really uh, another way of saying j. So when that gets t, uh, the 6 is going to get erased over here. No more 6 in here. What we're going to have instead is we're going to have um, we're going to have the um, we're going to have the uh, 5. So this 5 is going to be here, and there's a 6 over here. And in fact, we've exchanged i and j by using the uh, by passing addresses and dereferencing them in the uh, in the subprogram in the function.